On that particular day, I was acting as the incident commander for the operation. Things were nice and quiet. Uh, it was orderly. Headings were going absolutely fine. Peaceful pickets, uh, protocols being honored, uh, and so on. Well, already at 7 o'clock, I'm using a portion of our crowd management unit because we have a number of demonstrators blocking the entrance and saying that they're going to get inside Queen's Park. My, my view of the day was it was going to be on, uh, uh, the same as it would be any other day. I would say about uh, 8.30 in the morning, things seem to be getting out of hand. Palladini uh, did some of that strolling, but in the end, he strolled up in, uh, in a car and, uh, you know, uh, wasn't waiting a lot, but attempted to drive right up to the door and just you know, waltz right around and right through. We'll find a way. So Palladini's presence and uh, his bravado in trying to go in has kind of escalated things for the moment. And he's trying to move now, and the car is inching along. So it's a dangerous situation when you've got a moving vehicle and you've got crowds, but there is a large police presence trying to keep a lid on things. So at that time, it looks to me like I'm going to have to consider our crowd management unit as the only option to get these people in because we have tried here to bring people in just asking them to move away from doors to allow the MPPs to come in and people are saying no you're not getting in if you want to say some words sir, go ahead but don't be pushing and shoving okay first of all there's no OPP to be seen at that point certainly it's not their role hadn't been their role at this point to be involved metro police were present all over the place in small groups but they seemed content to let off to manage a decent picket line and that's what we did Tapping on the shield is something that they're trained to do. It's strictly to get our members ready, get them focused on the task at hand. Around 11 o'clock, I wasn't concerned about the riot police whatsoever, uh, quite frankly. Well, I'm sure that the adrenaline is flowing in those individual officers. Some of them, the average age is probably uh, three to five years service. And uh, some of them, no doubt, are a little scared, but they're focused on the task at hand. They have been trained and they're getting ready to go. When police started being reported, right, police start being reported inside, I assume to me that that's a very defensive approach that, you know, maybe they're expecting, maybe the, the police are expecting trouble and they just want to make sure they're prepared. seeing my team operate as they were trained, doing what they had to do because people broke the law. And I'm proud of what I'm seeing in terms of my team. I also see people being injured, and I don't like to see people injured, but that's sometimes one of the byproducts when people encounter the police in those settings. I was shocked. I didn't, I mean, for the reports we were getting from our members where they just came out and whacked them and stacked them exactly what they did. I thought that was quite aggressive. Uh, seemed to me that we were progressing into another league. We are your worst nightmare, Mike! Now it's about uh, 122, and uh, 95 Grosvenor Street has a number of people that are out front, and um, I want to get the MPPs and whoever else is with them into Queen's Park for the sitting of the house. At that particular time, I, uh, uh, in consultation, in conjunction with Metro, 
we decide to uh, bring the MPP into 95 Grover Street. We did what we could to, uh, uh, you know, from an officer perspective, to keep our members from getting beat, but unfortunately, there was uh, several uh, were beaten, sprayed, and uh, clubbed. We are only using as much force as is necessary. That's something that I guess people don't realize is that if those demonstrators are engaging my officers, I have to say at that particular point, they're bringing it on themselves. With respect to Mr. Hope, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, he, I mean, I don't know how he justifies uh, uh, my, 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 the reports we're getting about uh, Easterbrook, you know, blowing kisses from uh, behind right here uh, to picket, you know, we talk about provocation. As for the accusations of my team uh, making comments about whack em and stack em and blowing kisses to the crowd, I've never seen any instances of that on any tape, and we wouldn't stand for it. I don't stand for it personally, and we wouldn't stand for it as an organization. My opinion, and this is my opinion, is uh, this is the style of this government. Harris wants to show that he will not be intimidated, he will not be bullied, he will not be uh, coerced or held up at any door. His, is, uh, his will be the way he wants to do it, and it'll be done if we ask you, or we done if we tell you, or we done if we beat you. I have no doubts about the performance of my team and the decisions that I made on that particular day. Given the same set of circumstances, I would do things the same. Keith Carradine, every 